Okay, let's take a look at the first problem on page 93 of your extra practice book. It says the area of a rectangular piece of paper is 4 ninths meters squared. Its width is 4 meters. What is its length in meters? And remember, this is the one that I said you did not have to draw a bar model for. I, however, am going to draw a rectangle to illustrate the length, the width, and the area. It says that the piece of paper is 4 ninths meters squared. So, oh. Let's take a look at the first problem on page 93 of your extra practice book. It says the area of a rectangular piece of paper is 4 ninths meters squared. Its width is 4 meters. What is its length in meters? And remember, this is the one that you do not have to draw a bar model for. I, however, am going to draw a rectangle to illustrate the length, width, and area. We're told that the area is 4 ninths meters squared. So area equals 4 ninths meters squared. Its width is 4 meters. So its width is 4 meters. We want to know what is its length. So that's our question mark. What is its length? We know that to find area, we have to multiply length times width, and that will give us our area. Here we have our area, which is 4 ninths, and we have the width. So to find the length, we're going to take our area, 4 ninths, and we're going to need to divide that, see our area here, we have the area, and we're going to divide that by 4 to find the length, which is unknown. So now I'm going to rewrite this to solve 4 ninths times 1 over 4. I can cross cancel, and I end up with 1 ninth meter. So the length is one ninth meter. On to 1B. Six seventh liters of orange juice was shared equally among three students. How much orange juice did each student get? Give your answer in liters. And I have my sentence on the bottom. Each student received blank liters of orange juice. So I'm going to begin by drawing my full bar, this is going to be a part whole, and I'm told that six seven liters of orange juice was shared equally. So that means that that's the total amount, six seven liters. And it was shared equally among three students. So that means I'm going to want to break this up. We're going to share this six sevenths with three students. So I'm going to break it up into three parts. I want to know how much orange juice did each student get. So I want to know what just one part is. Now if I take a look at this, I can see that I can find one part by looking at my total, which is six sevenths liters, and dividing that by three. That will tell me what one part is, or what one student receives. So I'm going to rewrite this problem to solve as 6 sevenths times 1 third. I can cross cancel, both can be divided by 3, and when I solve I get 2 sevenths. So each student received 2 sevenths liters. Now let's take a look at 1C, and you'll see this one's going to be very similar to the last one that we just solved. Sam divided 5 eighths pounds of strawberries among five friends. How many pounds of strawberries did each friend receive? And I wrote my sentence on the bottom, each friend received blank pounds of strawberries. So we know that Sam's starting with 5 eighths pounds of strawberries because it says that he divided that amount amongst his friends. So I'm going to start by drawing my whole bar, and I'm going to label that whole bar 5 eighths pounds. 5 eighths pounds. 
And we're also told that that was split among five friends. One, two, three, four, five. Five friends receive that five eighths of strawberries split up equally. I want to know how many pounds of strawberries did each friend receive? To solve this, we're going to take our whole amount, which is 5 eighths, and we're going to divide that by 5. To solve, we're going to rewrite it as 5 eighths times 1 fifth. We're going to cross cancel and get 1 eighth. So each friend received 1 eighth pound of strawberries. All right, and we're on to problem 1D. It says Eric had 28 kilograms of soybeans. He gave three and one-fifth kilograms to his wife and packed the rest equally into bags. If each bag contained four-fifth kilograms of soybeans, how many bags could he pack? And my sentence on the bottom says Eric could pack blank bags. Well, let's take a look at the information that we're given. We're told that Eric had 28 kilograms of soybeans. So that we know that that's what he started with. So I can go ahead and draw my whole bar, and I know that he had originally 28 kilograms. I also know that he gave three and one fifth to his wife. So we're going to break off a little piece here. We know that this is what he gave away. So I'm going to label it gave away. And we know that that is one, I mean three, and one-fifth kilograms. It then says that he packed the rest, so that's all that's left here. He packed the rest equally into bags. And we're told how many kilograms, four-fifths kilograms, was packed into each one of those bags. So we know we're going to be breaking the remainder up here into four kilograms. We're going to see how many groups of four fifths we can fit in our leftover, in the leftover part of our bar. First, we're going to need to figure out what's left over here. So we are going to do that by doing 28 minus three and one fifth. To solve this, remember, we first take away the whole numbers. So that equals 28 minus 3 is 25. And now we need to take away 1 fifth. So we're going to borrow one whole and illustrate it as a fraction. So that's the same as 24 and 5 fifths minus 1 fifth. So it's 24 and 4 fifths. So we can fill this in now, 24 and 4 fifths. And on this one, it's going to be difficult to draw our final question mark. So we're actually not able to do that on this one because we want to know how many parts, like this, how many groups are we going to be able to break it up into currently. We don't know. So I'm going to take a look at my information. I know that what's left over here is 24 and 4 fifths kilograms. And I know that we're going to be packing it into bags that are four-fifths kilograms. So I'm going to take my current whole amount, which is 24 and four-fifths, and I'm going to divide that by four-fifths to figure out how many bags I'm going to be able to pack. So to solve that, I'm going to first convert my, my first fraction into an improper fraction. So 24 times 5, we can actually solve mentally, think. What's 25 times 5? That's 125. And then we want to take away 1 from each group of 25, right? So we're going to be taking away 5. So it's 120. So that means that we have 124, because remember we need to add that fraction back in, over 5 times 5 over 4. And we know that 124 can be divided by 4 
Because remember, the divisibility rule says that if the last two numbers are divisible by 4, then the whole number is divisible by 4. So we can actually cross-cancel here. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 124 divided by 4 equals 31. So this is going to become 31, and we can cross-cancel our 5s. So we end up with 31 over 1 which is the same thing as 31. So that means that in this space, we're going to be able to break it up into 31. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. I think I have 31 there. All right, so you get the picture. We can break it up into 40, into 31 groups. Each group is going to have four-fifths kilograms in it. So Eric could pack 31 bags. If you got caught on a step there or something was confusing, rewind the video and rewatch that part. 1E says Musa reads 20 pages of a book in a day. After six days, two-fifths of the book is still in red. How many pages are there in his book? My sentence says there are blank pages in Musa's book. So let's take a look at the information that we're given. We're told that Musa reads 20 pages of a book in a day. After six days, he has two-fifths of the book unread, that is still unread. So we're going to illustrate this. We need to draw our whole bar. And we know that two-fifths of the book is still unread. So I'm going to go ahead and break this up into five parts because my denominator here tells me the number of parts I need to break this up into to show the amount that's read and unread. So I'm going to break it up into five. One, two, three, four, five. We know that this two-fourths is unread, which means that this three-fifths is what has been read, right? Because the total is going to be all the pages in the book, which is actually what we want to find out. How many pages are there in his book? So that's our big question mark. We're able to figure out this three-fifths by the other information we were given. We know that he reads 20 pages of a book in a day, and we know that it was after six days that he had the two-fifths left over. So to figure out what those three parts are, we're simply going to multiply 20 times 6. 20 pages a day for 6 days means that he read 120 pages. So I can label that 3 fifths 120. Now we can use the unit method to solve this. That actually that makes the most sense. So to figure out what each unit is, I'm going to do 120 divided by 3, which we can solve mentally. 3 goes into 12 four times, and we have our zero left over. So that means that each unit is 40. So to find our whole, we're going to do 40 times 5, which is 200. So there are 200 pages in Musa's book. 